What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out a free extension from Christina Inneroth that allows you to project 3D objects onto 2D faces. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Inneroth Project to Face is a free extension you can download from the SketchUp Extension Warehouse. I'll also link to it in the notes down below. But it basically does exactly what it sounds like. It takes your groups or components and projects them onto a face. So you can use it in order to create like two dimensional outlines of your shapes. Now, there are some things you need to know about this, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But first, let's jump over into SketchUp and I've installed the extension. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that um, you've taken your object that you want to project and you've made it a group or a component. So notice how right now, if I run this, it doesn't give me an option to project it. However, if I take this whole thing, make it a group like this, and then run Inneroth Project to Face, it's going to ask me the face I want to project to. I can click right here and it's going to take that object and it's going to project it to that face. Now, this result isn't uh, super interesting, but it gets a little bit more interesting uh, a little ways down the road. So it seems to take the object and project it along the normal of the face, meaning the direction the face is facing. So for example, if I was to run this again, and notice how it's actually still running, but notice how it's going to ask me to select my group or component to project and then the face to project too. So if I click in here like this, it's going to project along the surface. So again, not super interesting because it's basically just looking at this from a straight on standpoint. However, if we look at this rectangle right here, so if we select this and then click on this face, notice how we get a different projection in here. It's basically taking these and projecting them straight on like this onto this surface right here. And so if we look at this, this is just basically a collection of edges that were just projected directly onto this surface. So let's take a look at another example. Let's say we've got a surface that's rotated like this. Remember with this object, that means the normal direction or the direction at which this is uh, facing outward is basically like this, right? So the normal of this face is facing outward this way. Well, if we were to select this tool, select this object and then click on it, notice how it's going to project it in more of an angular direction right here. So the direction of this surface right here is really kind of affecting the result that we're getting. Now, let's say that we were to take this surface and let's duplicate it one more time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna split it like this. And we'll just rotate this a little bit more like this. So. Now, now let's say we were to take this box and let's just move it over so that it's aligned right here. Well now, if we were to run this, we couldn't project it on both surfaces because what it does is it asks us to select, to select one object and then a surface that we want to project this along. So if we wanted this to project along this surface right here, notice how we would have to basically um, run this twice. But again, notice how the normal direction right here is such that it's not actually going to see the box. So if we wanted to do that, we would need this box to be closer to this object. So I'm gonna move this over here, and let's even say that it's kind of centered on this point right here. So it's a little bit closer like this. But now, if we were to run this, right, so we're gonna select it. So we've got our object selected, then we've got our face. Notice how this face is now missing the object as well, but we would get it on the top one. So it gets a little tricky if you try to do this along multiple different surfaces. Um, so just be aware of that when you're working with this tool. Um, it's gonna work a lot better with a singular surface like this. The other thing to be aware of with this is it's only going to project um, geometry that isn't softened. So for example, I generated this sphere using the um, follow me tool. And notice how all of the geometric detail in here is softened, right? So this is all in here as hidden geometry rather than non-hidden geometry. Well, what that means is that means if I try to run Inneroth project to face right here, notice how we're not really gonna get anything down below, right? However, let's say we were to come in here and let's, uh, let's show our hidden geometry for a second. Let's say we were to unhide some of this geometry. So, and I'm gonna use selection toys so that I can only select the edges in here. That's a different extension, but I'm gonna go ahead and unhide these and then run this. So now, if I use Inneroth project to face and project it to the surface, the unhidden geometry is going to get projected here. So if you've got a sphere like this one right here that has everything unsoftened so you can see all the edges and then you run this, 
so something like this, notice how you're gonna get a complete picture of your sphere on this surface right here. So there are some really interesting applications to this. I will note though that it doesn't seem to be very stable with larger objects. So I have this simple object right here. It's not really super complex or anything like that. I mean, if I select everything, it's only 2,700 entities. But if I try to run this, I've had this crash every time I've tried to do it. So you do need to be aware that there are definitely some complexity requirements. You can try it with any model that you have, but I would recommend that you save before you try to run it, just in case you get a bug splat and you lose your work. All right, so I'll link to this extension in the notes down below. Big thanks to my supporters on Patreon for voting on this extension. Um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.